What's going on, YouTube family? This is your man, Pristine, back with another video. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to the unboxing for the Lenovo Z5. This video is also entitled, The Genius Behind the Deceit. Quick, in quick introduction. Lenovo, um, outside of what they're doing with Motorola, they acquired Motorola six, seven years ago or something like that. They've been, you know, the conglomerate that's been behind a lot of these latest Moto devices, the Moto Z, the Moto Z Force, Moto Z Play, the Z2 Force, the Z2 Play, uh, the Moto G series in the, in, the, in, the, in the budget category, on up to the Moto X and some of the mid-range, you know, categories. Um, responsible for a lot of the new Moto products that are getting ready to roll out here. I believe in a couple of days, the Moto Z3 Play is going to be out, and then that's going to be followed up with the Moto Z3 Force, um, you know, that kind of thing. So in that particular regard, Motorola is doing some things with Lenovo as the, as, as the, the overseer, right? Lenovo now owns Motorola. But outside of that, Lenovo, they make up a very, very tiny fraction in the mobile world. And I'm talking about like maybe two or three percent, definitely not enough to be a part of the smartphone conversation. Now, fast forward to 2018, where we're living in an age now where pretty much every device that is released has a notch design. It's got the 19 by 9 aspect ratio. Um, you know, some phones are giving you the ability under the display settings to black out the notch if you hate the notch. But nonetheless, that seems to be a trend in the smartphone world. And so we've been clamoring for a company that's going to make a device without the notch and find a new and innovative way to do something with the front facing camera along with all the sensors that are typically housed inside of this notch design, right? And so Lenovo, they knew of this and they took advantage of an opportunity to um, uh, uh, market a device uh, 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 that they were gonna be putting out, okay? And so what they did was they started leaking out bits and pieces of information about this device on how it was going to be the first all screen, uh, slimmest bezel possible, no notch phone, um, you know, 95.5% screen to body ratio um, device that was going to, you know, hit the market, right? There was some talk about there was going to be like four terabytes of storage. Um, they said that the battery life was going to be able to last an amazing 30 minutes, even after the battery was completely dead. A lot of people were just kind of like, uh, whatever, you know, me, I was like, whatever, that's not true. This phone is definitely not going to have four terabytes of storage. And the whole thing with the battery, eh, you know, I mean, there's all kind of technology that exists nowadays. And just because we don't see or hear about much of it, it's not to say that it don't exist. And so I was thinking, well, you know, it wouldn't be a surprise to where some company will find some new innovative ways to make battery life last, even when the battery is pretty much dead. So... June 5th was the unveiling for this particular device. And like I said, I mean, the information that was being spewed all over the internet, it wasn't like it was just like random sources coming out with these rumors just to spark up conversation. This information was coming from Lenovo themselves. The CEO of the mobile division was putting this information out and a lot of other people within the mobile division at Lenovo was also putting this information out. A lot of people had renders on what they thought the phone was going to look like online that you, I'm sure you guys saw a lot of those renders. I definitely saw them building up that hype to the event on June 5th. And then June 5th rolled around, the, the, the phone was unveiled, it was, it was launched, only to come to find out that this phone is just another phone that does have a notch, so it's another notch option. Um, the four terabyte thing, that was a separate like chip or something that they were working on. Um, and they said that information got mixed up and led people to believe that the phone was going to have four terabytes of storage when, in fact, they were the ones that were putting this information out. So there was no mix up there, or not in my mind, at least. Um, and then the phone, it comes with a 3,300 milliamp hour non-removable battery that once the battery's dead, it's gone. You can forget about it. There is no half hour of additional staying power after the battery's completely dead. That's just That just doesn't exist, right? And a lot of people were disappointed by this, right? A lot of people were disappointed by this, completely pissed off because when that event rolled around, there were asses in every seat. There were hundreds of millions of people watching the, the, uh, the presentation online. And a lot of people were really disappointed by this because they were really anticipating this full screen display with no notch, new innovative way of, of where the camera is going to be placed, uh, 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 where the front sensors on the phone is going to be placed, no buttons. 
you know, you, you get where I'm going. A lot of people were upset about that. And it's interesting because we got two devices that just recently hit the scene that you and I are going to be able to get our hands on. They are not concepts. And I'm talking about the, um, the Vivo Nex or the Vivo NEX. And we've got the Oppo Find X, which those are some really great flagship devices doing some really interesting things with the cameras. You know, we got moving parts now, you know, bringing up the front facing and the rear cameras on the Find X. Um, and like I said, those are concept devices. I mean, we will be able to buy those pro uh, products and be able to get them in our hands and test them out for ourselves. But Lenovo led us to believe that they were going to be the first one to do something like this. And they told a big fat lie. So there's the deceit. Now, here's the genius behind the deceit. In order to market this device and get the masses like you, myself, and everybody else that paid attention to that device and got caught up in the hype, they had to put that lie together to get people paying attention. So even though after the, after the phone was unveiled and everybody was disappointed, when the smoke cleared, you still have to sit back and you have to ask yourself, okay, we got a device that has an 18 by 7.9 aspect ratio. We do have a notch. We've got a Snapdragon 636 processor. We've got six gigs of RAM, which is two more gigs of RAM more than any other device that's in its class because a lot of these mid-range devices, they typically come with four gigs of RAM. Okay. Um, now, and, and, a device that's very comparable to this is the Asus Zenfone 5, which also has four gigs of RAM, but it has the same processor, the Snapdragon 636 processor. We saw how that performed. Everything was nice and smooth, buttery smooth, actually. Um, that phone just needs to get some done, some stuff done uh, with the camera and everything. You know, Lenovo need to really push some updates, and that phone will also be a great option. But nonetheless, this phone is basically the same as the Lenovo uh, or the, the Asus Zenfone 5, but you give it two more dish, two additional gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage that can be expanded to 256 gigs. We do have a Type-C port. We've got a dual camera set up on the rear. Um, we've got a 16 megapixel primary sensor on the rear. We've got an eight megapixel telephoto lens, I believe it is. And then on the front, we've got an eight megapixel uh, sensor. We do have quick charge on board. Now, typically a device with those particular specs, that'll easily run you about $400, maybe $450, maybe $500, depending on the market in which you're in. But Lenovo is giving us that package for $229.99. Now, now let that marinate. Ponder on that for a second, ladies and gentlemen. $229.99. The same price as one of the best budget devices, in my personal opinion, in the Huawei Mate SE. And in my personal opinion, this phone kills off the Huawei Mate SE because it's it's a, it's a higher-end, mid-range device. Not saying anything about the Huawei Mate SE, but if I had if I if I, if, I, if I had a choice between the Z5 here and the Huawei Mate SE, I'm going to choose the Z5 here because with the Z5 you're getting more, and they're the same price. So. When the smoke cleared after the unveiling of this device, in spite the lie, in spite the lie, which was a great marketing strategy, okay, the lie was a part of the marketing campaign to bring awareness to this device, okay? Outside of what Lenovo is doing with Motorola, like I said, I mean, they make up 2 to 3% of the mobile industry, which isn't very much. And so when you, with that said, what did Lenovo have to lose by feeding us this lie to to get to bring awareness to the Z5 here. They didn't have anything to lose. Now, a lot of people felt because of the lie and how blatant the lie was, a lot of people felt that there's no way that the phone is going to sell because too many people were upset. And I understand that, right? Well, about a week later, when the phone was released online, within 10 or 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, this phone sold out. Sold out. It was one of the fastest devices to ever sell out online in the Chinese market. And this phone is still selling like hotcakes. I'm surprised that I was able to get my hands on this device. So, like I said, the reason why I entitled this the, 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 the genius behind the deceit is because, yes, they deceived, they deceived us to bring awareness to the device. But yet, keeping it on store shelves, good luck. This phone is selling like hotcakes. Lenovo Z5, of course, I had to get it. 
You know what I mean? I had to get it. This phone definitely has some controversy swirling around it. And who doesn't like a little, little controversy, a little drama in their lives, right? Let's crack this box, y'all. Let's crack this box. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get this bad boy unboxed. Now, real quick, I'm going to just run through the specs. I know that I went over a few of them, but I want to give you the full detailed technical spec list for this device. And so you know exactly what it is that you're getting into. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. 6.2 inch, 1080 by 2246 pixel full HD panel. We've got an aluminum frame that is sandwiched in between 2.5 D curved glass on the front and back of the device. We've got a pixel density of 402 PPI for all of you tech heads out there. We've got a 18 by 7.9 aspect ratio. We do have a 90% screen to body ratio. As I mentioned, this phone does have the Snapdragon 636 processor in it. We've got six gigs of RAM. 64 gigs of onboard storage that can be expanded up to 256 gigs. We have dual nano SIMs and we've got an Adreno GPU of 509. We are running Android Oreo 8.1, fresh out of the box. Z, uh, ZUI 4.0 is the skin that Lenovo is rocking over Android 8.1. We do have a screen brightness, total nits of 700, and so this phone definitely gets plenty bright and there is actually a brightness enhancement mode that you can click into if for whatever reason you've got the uh, screen brightness to the highest um, the highest level and you're still having some problems seeing whether it be from sunlight or different glares from lighting in the env environments in which you are then you can click this uh, screen brightening enhancement feature and it will uh, brighten the screen temporarily just to help you see things a little clearer all right now <clears throat> cameras as I mentioned, we've got a dual camera system on the back of the device. Uh, the primary is a 16 megapixel shooter. The secondary is an 8 megapixel sensor. And then the front selfie camera is also an 8 megapixel sensor. And some notable features with the camera, we've got autofocus, dual LED, dual tone flash, touch focus, face detection, HDR, panorama. We do have AI capabilities on board with this camera and we do have 4K recording. Now. The battery, as I mentioned, we've got a non-removable 3,300 milliamp hour battery. We do have quick charge uh, that is supported. We do have a type C reversible connector and we've got a 15 watt fast charger. So things should charge pretty quickly on this device. Now we have, um, we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have Bluetooth 5.0. There is no NFC on this device. And so if you're somebody that like to transfer files wirelessly, um, or do mobile payments and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to do that from this device. There is no NFC. All right. We have a fingerprint sensor. We do have facial recognition on board. And the colors that you can get this device in is black, blue, and Aurora. Now, Aurora is the color choice that I originally went for. Um, and the company in which I bought this from touched bases with me a day later saying that the, the Aurora color wasn't going to be available until like sometime mid-July. Um, I'm very impatient and I wasn't going to wait until mid-July, especially considering that I'd already paid for it. So this is the uh, the black variant. And you guys already know, man, all black, everything, no racist. But I thought that I would change it up with that Aurora color. If you don't know what Aurora is, it's kind of like very similar to the uh, Huawei P20 Pro. How it has like that kind of that chameleon color, you know, it's like a blue, green, purple. It just kind of changes colors depending on how you hold it and how light reflects off of it. You will be able to get the Lenovo Z5 here in that particular color scheme. All right. So let's go ahead and crack the box. As you can see, the presentation, white and red. Those of you that know me, red is my favorite color. No gang affiliation. It just is what it is, man. I love red. Love red. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so we'll go ahead and slip the Lenovo Z5 sleeve off. And you got a box that looks very similar to the boxes that OnePlus devices come in. And so as you can see on the front, got the Lenovo branding there in the bottom. We've just got some Chinese literature there to the right of the device or on the box. We've got Lenovo 
And at the top, we've got the barcodes and IEMI and serial numbers, all that jazz. Nothing on the left side of the box. And then on the bottom side of the box, we've got some more a QR scan code, some more information there in Chinese. Um, and be mindful, ladies and gentlemen, this phone is not released in the U.S. And so this came from Hong Kong, China. And so everything on the device is in Hong Kong <laughs> or in Chinese. I mean, so you have to change the, the, the language and settings um, to English and therefore you will be able to you know understand uh, everything but here is the device and there is the sim ejector tool in the little tray that the phone is kept in and here is the phone here and no I do not want to reboot so there we are and you guys already know man I've already got the phone all set up to my liking and all that kind of thing and so that's what it looks like again there's that 90 percent screen to body ratio we do have a little bit of a chin here at the bottom as you can see we've got the notch there at the top typical 2018 stuff all right so we'll put the phone aside momentarily we'll come back to that once we check out all the other contents in the box now here is the literature that comes in the box lenovo z5 like i said a lot of that is written in chinese i can't understand what that is and so we'll just go ahead and toss that aside we do have a rubber TPU bumper case, which is excellent that they put this in device because, or put this in with the device because I can't imagine this phone is gonna get a lot of third party support. And so it's good that Lenovo put a little something in there to help us protect our investment. Now here is that 15 watt wall adapter, as you can see in the glare, Lenovo, okay. And here is our USB to type C cord which is gonna help fast charge our device. Now, there is, I see something in the device that says that the device has wireless charging. And um, when I put it in my wireless charger, which is right up there in the little counter, um, nothing happens. And so I'm not sure if that's something that you have to turn on or what, but I will definitely play with that a little more. And um, I have a follow up on that in the full pristine review because if this phone has wireless charging then that's just another notch under its belt um, that will make it better than some of the competition like, you know, the likes of, you know, the Asus Zenfone 5 and others in this particular class. Um, but again, here is the device itself. And so as you can see, 6.2 inch full HD panel, beautiful display, corner to corner. Um, here is the notch. Here's the 8 megapixel front facing camera alongside the ear receiver and then there's an LED, an LED notification light that blinks different colors depending on your notifications uh, right there at the top as well. Now, as I mentioned, we do have this little chin on the bottom there next to our capacitive keys right there and there's nothing down there. Um, would have been nice for that not to have been there, but you know, it's not really a big deal. I mean, look at this, man. I mean, this is 90% screen to body ratio, man, come on. You know, that, that looks, that's, that's gorgeous. All right. Now, to the right of the device, you guys can see we've got the power button right there, which does have some rigidity, and then we've got the volume markers up and down. And to the top of the device, we've got a little antenna line right there. We've got another antenna line here along with a noise-canceling microphone. To the left, here is our SIM tray. Now, we do have dual nano SIMs, or you can have a nano SIM and an SD card, which can expand the memory up to 256 gigs. Bottom of the device, we've got another antenna line there, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, Type-C connector port for charging, little noise canceling mic there. Here's our bottom firing speaker and another um, antenna line there. And then when you flip the phone around, the Lenovo branding there, and you can see there's a little bit of a shimmer there in the lighting. Pretty cool. Rear mounted fingerprint sensor, dual tone LED flash, and then here is our vertical camera lens set up now definitely this phone is a fingerprint magnet and so you definitely want to keep a microfiber cleaning cloth of some sort nearby if you're going to rock this phone bucket naked um because it's definitely going to get smudged up for sure um now the fingerprint really quickly it is nice and snappy for me um it does take maybe a second second and a half two seconds longer than some other extremely fast fingerprint sensors like the likes of the OnePlus devices or Huawei or Honor devices, but nonetheless, it does work. As you can see, let's tap it there, okay? And it works 100% of the time there. So as you can see, by the time I flip the phone over, then the screen is open, all right? So that's pretty cool right there. Good to have that. 
and there we go. All right, so again, Snapdragon uh, 636 processor, six gigs of RAM, definitely help things uh, and keep things running nice and smooth. Now, another thing that I wanna mention to you guys that on this device, because of the fact that it's not released here in the States, um, they didn't even have the Google Play Store installed on it. And so I had to download the Google Play Store APK and get it on the phone. I downloaded Chrome, sign in all the, you know, all the Google stuff, and then you just take it from there. And so be mindful that if you get this device imported, you're going to have to install the Google Play Store. You're going to have to install Chrome. Um, you don't necessarily have to select the, uh, select Chrome as your main browser, um, but I would recommend it unless you speak Chinese because the app store that comes on the device is a Chinese app store and everything is in Chinese. I mean, so um, if you can understand that, cool. But if not, then you're going to have to download the Play Store um, and Google Chrome so that you got a browser on here that you can un that you'll be able to read and understand. All right. So just putting that out there for you guys. But, you know, that only took a couple of minutes to do. No big deal. Um, no hassles at all whatsoever, you know, in, you know, installing those things on the device. So, yeah, no complaints there. All right. Now, as I mentioned, Android 8.1 Oreo fresh out of the box. All right. We go down to system and about phone. And you can see here Lenovo Z5. Snapdragon 636 total gigs of RAM. Six. As you can see, 64 gig, the available gigs that I've got and with everything that I've installed, 40 is that? 43.32 gigabytes. As you can see, ZUI, we do have Android 8.1. And the April 1st, 2018, we have one of the latest security patches on there. Okay, so I just want to show you guys that real quick. And real quick, if we go into network and internet, this is typically where NFC lives. And so I just want to click on here to show you guys that there is no NFC on this device. And so some of you, that may be a determining factor, others, Maybe not so much me. I don't really care too much about that. All right. Now, when you scroll down from the top of the device, this brings up your um, your notification tray. And so any notifications that you guys may have, then this is where it's going to be. Now, typically on devices, you just scroll down once to get your notifications, and then you scroll down twice or another time to get to your quick toggle settings um, little tray. Well, in order to get to that, you simply swipe up from the bottom, and that's where that lives. And so this is where you're going to be able to toggle your Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, your flashlight, you know, take a screenshot, location, mobile data, airplane mode, all that kind of thing, brightness. And there are different, um, there are different little um, settings with this that you can customize and choose if you're not really feeling that particular setup and we'll go over that in the settings really quickly now if you scroll to the right this is um basically like a chinese version of google now um and so i haven't figured out how to quite get this off of here yet um but i will but as you can see this is just a bunch of information that is in Chinese so I can't understand that actually what I what I did was I um I got my one plus six over here and I got into my um um what what is the app god it's not coming to me oh yeah Google Translate and so you know the Google Translate app you know it gives you the option to type words in or just hold up the camera and show it things and it will show you uh, um what things say and so what i did was i just held my one plus six up to the phone and i was kind of scrolling through and the uh the app was just telling me everything that it said so that's one way to understand things on this device if you can all right um but the best way to do it would be just to turn everything to english and you'll be good to go all right you do have that feature under the settings now <clears throat> so here the quick panel so this is what I was talking about here. And so you've got quick panel sequence and there's three different sequences in which you can choose from, but then you could also long press on them and you can kind of move things around and change the configuration to your liking. I mean, so it's not like you're stuck with just choosing one of these particular sequences and that's what you have to rock with. It gives you an option to choose basically whatever you want, however you want it. And then you just click out of it and then you can pull up, 
pull it up and then that's how it's going to appear all right then you've got show in lock screen and show in applications which you know i have those turned on all right so that's one little cool little thing now when you go to personalization this is where you can change your wallpaper your fonts and your themes you go to themes it comes with a few really cool looking things that kind of changes the look of the overall device um and then when you go to display i was looking for an option to see if you could turn off the notch if i can get things to focus there and there isn't an option under the display settings to turn off the notch and so you've got adaptive brightness night light font size device rotation sleep double tap to power on the screen and prevent pocket dials that's the only thing that you've got under the display settings so maybe with an with an update or something you'll be able to kill off the notch if that's not something that you're into if you want to rock with this device me i like the way that it looks and so i just leave it as is um i know that you can change that on the one plus six here and then this is my lg g7 right here um you can change that as well you can get rid of the notch but you know me personally i mean i think it looks um i think it looks pretty dope so i just leave it as is or as is so just want to show you guys that really quickly you don't have that option yet but it may come with a feature with a future update all right now click on game mode and you have a mode where it recognizes game apps and it improves the overall gaming experience i'm just going to turn that off because i'm not a mobile gamer but you'll see when you have that turned on then all the other things that you can tweak for games comes on and so you've got performance mode clear cache prevent switching network um and what that does is it's like if you're playing a game on your mobile network and you walk in somewhere where your phone you know typically will automatically um connect to wi-fi then it won't do that because it could possibly mess up your game and interfere with your progress you know so that's a pretty cool little feature to have do not disturb game keyboard and then disable navigation bar or you touch and so the navigation bar that's just the bar down here where your capacitive keys are and i also i haven't found um where you can change these around i mean so that's the typical android setting i like for it to be over you know the other way around where back is here um home is right there which is fine um but then i like to have recents on the left and so i haven't seen anywhere where you can change that now you touch what that does is that gives you the ability to do away with the with the on-screen navigation keys and um and i'll show that to you in a second and you can just do everything just touch gestures like you would on the iphone x um which is pretty cool and i know you can do that on the one plus six as well so you do have that feature on the lenovo z5 here Okay, and let's just go into that really quickly. And when you click on lab features, you've got multiple space, which I'm not really too sure what that is. I have to play around with that. Position travel, I know that that has something to do with maps. Message article page switching, screen recorder, and then you go to U-Touch here. Now, it gives you a tutorial right there on U-Touch. And so if you click that on, then it gets rid of the navigation keys here. Okay, you just saw them go away. And then back, you just swipe up from the middle okay home you also swipe up from the middle but you hold recents swipe up from the bottom left and then your quick panel you swipe up from the bottom right okay and then you could also customize the gestures as well and so slide up on the left it's by default it's on recent task but you can switch that to quick panel and then slide up from the right by default it's on quick panel you can change that to recent task if you want to all right so um i'm still trying to learn the device and so i'm just gonna go back to the capacitive keys being on the screen but just want to show that to you guys you guys do have the option to change that around um if that's something that you so desire now Let's go to the camera really quickly. And I've already taken some photos of this, of, you know, with this phone. And I gotta say, man, the, the, not, the, not to say that I was expecting for the camera to be bad, but the camera is better than what I thought it was gonna be. The camera on this phone is absolutely amazing. I've taken some phenomenal shots and I'm very much so looking forward to putting together that dedicated camera video because this camera 
is definitely a good one. Now, if you look at the different modes that we've got there, we've got photo mode, video, dual, pro mode, which gives you just complete control. And then when you swipe and you click into the plugins there, you've got slow motion, time lapse, night shot, AR portrait, panorama, easy document, and mini video. And so we'll just go ahead and go back to photo there. You see we do have two-time optical zoom right there, which you see that feature on a lot of the flagships. And so it's nice that it ha that it is here on the camera here on the Lenovo Z5. And then you can see here we do have an HDR mode, which is not on right now. We've got the timer. We're in the 4x3 aspect, you can change it to 16x9, 18x9, or 1x1, okay? So by default, it is on 4x3. And then if you um, click on little icon right there, you've got some other little filters and things. You've got some little filters here, and you've got tons of them, right? You scroll to the left, and then you've got some little cartoony ones that kind of tweak thing you know how things look i mean so some pretty cool little effects and then when you swipe to the right then you've got even more of them and i think these four are, are some that you can customize you know select red select green select yellow select blue um but you can see those there and then you know you got vivid food lamo vintage soft grayscale salt and then classic and then these Pencil, comic, sketch, watercolor, Harris, Gailey, negative, right? Some pretty, pretty, pretty cool little things that you can tweak and play around with with this camera. Now, just looking at some photos that I've taken with this picture, um, and uh, you know, the, although the camera is great here on the Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus, which is what I'm recording with. It doesn't do these pictures any justice by looking at it through the lens of this camera. These pictures are extremely detailed. Colors are extremely accurate. They punch out. I'm not overexposed, you know, and I know that I'm, I'm high yellow. You know, I got a little bit of brown to me. Um, but everything just looks crystal clear and nice and crisp. And I was even surprised by this photo because taking it with the blinds behind me with sunlight coming through, typically photos like this that I've taken with other cameras, I would get completely overexposed and I'll be like almost as white as my t-shirt that I'm wearing. Um, and so I like the way that the camera handled this particular photo as well. Now my little Android figurine right there, I mean, nice and detailed shot. And this photo right here. Now, I mean, just the detail of my sweater, the watch, the shadows from the lighting, the carpet, just the detail of the carpet in the background. I mean, this camera takes some amazing photos. And here's another one that I took with the rear facing shooter. And I, it's not the, the secondary lens on the back. It's not a telephoto lens because we don't, we don't, I mean, it's not a monochrome because we don't have, um, that mono option here under the camera app. And so I believe that it's either a telephoto lens or it could just be a lens just to help with depth information. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, and you can see I got my little watermark on right there, but yeah, it takes some stunning photos. Here's another picture that I taken, and if you could just look at the detail of the carpet, again, just looking at it through the lens up so you guys can get a clearer view of them in the um, in the dedicated camera video that I plan on doing uh, with this device. But you know, I am very, very, very impressed with the camera on this device. Now, opening apps, I mean. Things just pop right open, you know, and that's going to be contingent on your connection. Um, I'm connected to my Wi-Fi. You know, speeds are always different when you're connected to Wi-Fi versus your, um, your, your network. And I find that this device works much better, according to sources, on AT&T and Cricut. And so thankfully for me, I do have an AT&T application or an, an AT&T SIM card for me to, you know, just pop it in. Um, but strangely, I don't seem to get the best reception here at my house. And so that's why I'm connected to Wi-Fi here. Um, but, you know, just giving you guys a quick overview of just how snappy the device is. 
And you guys saw how the Snapdragon 636 performed in the Asus Zenfone 5. I mean, things were extremely buttery smooth, right? No problem. I mean, things, it was just opening and closing apps and just breezing through things like a hot knife through butter. Um, and it's the same experience here on the Lenovo Z5. Now, sp speaking of the Asus Zenfone 5, I'm telling you, if that phone gets some updates, which I'm sure that it will to correct a lot of its issues, because I know that Asus, they really back and support their products. And so I know that I kind of went on a rant and bashed the Asus Zenfone 5, but it's still a good device. And considering that, you know, if some updates come out that fix all the issues that I was having with the device, then for sure it's going to be a major player in this particular class, which is, you know, the mid-range category right so ladies and gentlemen that's all i've got here for the lenovo z5 yes it's another notch option but it's offering a lot for the precious price of 229.99 and so yeah i mean they have lenovo they deceived us you know to capture our, to, 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 to capture captivate our attention and bring some awareness to the uh, this device, which I don't necessarily think that they had to do because I think if they would have just came out and said, hey, we're putting out a mid-range device, this is what it's doing, this is what it's offering, and this is the price. I think that a lot of people would have been, you know, this phone still would have would have been pretty successful in my personal opinion as opposed to feeding us a bunch of lies just to bring awareness to the device. But, you know, that's the direction in which they chose to go. Obviously, it worked because this phone is just selling out by the masses. Um... You know, it is what it is, you know. So, hope you guys liked what you saw here. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. And definitely keep it locked here at Pristine Mobile Tech because I've got so much more content to come. Stay tuned for the dedicated camera video that I'm going to be doing on the Lenovo Z5 here. And also stay tuned because I've got the full Pristine review coming for the OnePlus 6 here. And also the dedicated camera video for the LG G7 and the Pristine review for the LG G7 as well. So make sure you keep it locked here. Hit that notification bell so you can be one of the first to view the content whenever I upload and be the first to drop me any feedback, any questions, comments that you have on anything that you see here at Pristine Mobile Tech. All right? All right. So you guys already know, man. Stay safe, get spiritually fit, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right? All right. Peace.